The Northwest Territories in Canada is a vast, sparsely populated region with dense forests, towering mountains, winding rivers, and abundant wildlife. Despite its immense size, it has a population of only around 50,000 people, making it largely wild and untamed. The Nahani Valley, situated in the heart of the Northwest Territories, covers 11,000 square miles and is renowned for its rugged wilderness. Designated as a national park in 1976, the Nahani Valley is devoid of typical park amenities like hotels and roads. Accessible only by plane, boat, or challenging hikes, it offers breathtaking natural beauty and remains largely untouched by human development. The Nahani Valley, renowned for its natural splendor, harbors a sinister history shrouded in mystery. Native tribes, like the Naha tribe, settled there only to vanish abruptly, leaving behind their possessions. Stories abound of encounters with eerie beings such as white demons and large wolves known as wahilas. Despite its picturesque landscapes, the valley has witnessed inexplicable events since the early 1900s, contributing to its mystique. In 1904, three brothers from the Northwest Territories, Willie, Frank, and Charlie McLeod, decided to search for gold in the Nahani Valley. They believed that since few people had been there before, any gold would still be undiscovered. The McLeod brothers, Willie, Frank, and Charlie, embarked on a challenging journey to the Nahani Valley, navigating the rapids of the Flat River to prospect for gold. After a successful haul, their boat capsizes on the return journey, losing all their gold and supplies. Despite their loss, they salvage enough to construct another boat and return to their gold site, only to find no further success. Disheartened, they leave the valley and return home, their journey a testament to the uncertainties of prospecting in the rugged Nahani landscape. Willie, Frank, and Charlie McLeod reached the Nahani Valley after a challenging journey. They found gold along the flat river, but lost it when their boat capsized on their return journey. Despite this, Willie and Frank want to return, while Charlie stays behind, assuming their success will prolong their absence. As time went on with no word from the trio, Charlie remained optimistic, believing they were thriving in the valley due to its rich gold deposits and their experience. However, as years passed without communication, Charlie became increasingly worried. Eventually, after two years, he organized a search party comprised of four others from his town to venture into the Nahani Valley and locate his brothers and Robert Weir. The search party embarked on another challenging journey into the Nahani Valley, navigating the treacherous flat river. They scanned the riverbanks for any signs of life, hoping to find Willie, Frank, and Robert. Despite their efforts, they found no trace of them. As they reached the point where the Flat River joins the larger South Nahani River, they continued downstream. Their search took them through a sharp turn known as the Big Bend, leading them into a 10-mile stretch called Second Canyon. The South Nahani River is about 350 miles long and passes through four massive canyons, Fourth Canyon, Third Canyon, Second Canyon, and First Canyon. Second Canyon is particularly daunting, with sheer cliffs rising to 3,000 feet above the water. The water itself is incredibly deep, with little shoreline due to the cliffs almost directly meeting the water's edge. As Charlie and his search party ventured into Second Canyon, they encountered a stark and eerie landscape. The canyon's massive cliffs loomed overhead, casting shadows and obscuring sunlight. The wind picked up, adding to the eerie atmosphere. The canyon's sheer walls contained numerous cave openings, adding to the sense of being watched. Entering Second Canyon, the darkness deepened and the wind intensified. The narrow strips of shoreline offered little relief, and the party scanned both sides for any signs of life. However, their attention was drawn to a tent nestled among trees on the left side just before the exit of Second Canyon. Approaching the tent, they made a grim discovery, a body lying outside. The sight filled them with dread and raised questions about what had happened to Willie, Frank, and Robert. Charlie and the search party rushed to the bodies near the tent. One body was missing its head, with burnt clothes, and seemed to have reached for a rifle that lay just out of reach. Another body, badly decomposed, was partly in and out of the tent, also missing its head. They searched for the heads but couldn't find them. 
Personal items confirmed they were Charlie's brothers. Their friend Robert Weir was missing and his fate remained uncertain. A carving in a nearby tree suggested they had found gold, but no gold was found on them or nearby. The police concluded that all three men had starved to death and animals had scattered their remains. Charlie believed they were attacked by local tribes, but the police disagreed, calling it an accident. People were divided in their opinions, with some believing Robert had murdered the brothers for their gold, while others thought they were attacked by something sinister. The area where the bodies were found became known as the Headless Valley, instilling fear in people despite its potential for gold mining. Despite the chilling tales of the Nahani Valley, gold prospector Martin Jorgensen ventured into it in 1913. He found gold and built a cabin to stay through the winter. However, when his partners arrived the next summer, they found his torched cabin and his headless burned corpse. The police couldn't determine his cause of death and didn't link it to the previous decapitations in the area. In 1921, despite rumors of a killer, gold prospectors John O'Brien and his partner entered the valley. John went to check their traps and didn't return. His partner found him frozen to death by a campfire, holding a matchbook, appearing as if he'd been flash frozen. Despite his death, he seemed peaceful, with no signs of discomfort or fear. After Annie Lafferty disappeared during a hunting trip in Nahani Valley in 1926, a man named Charlie came forward with a disturbing sighting. He recounted seeing a naked woman, seemingly possessed, running on all fours up a mountainside near the river where the hunting party camped. Her frantic movements caused rocks to tumble into the river below. Charlie was unnerved by her appearance and chose not to pursue her, sensing something deeply unsettling about her demeanor. Despite the search efforts, Annie was never found. Charlie's account added to the mystery surrounding the Nahani Valley, with tales of strange occurrences and unexplained disappearances becoming part of its eerie reputation. The Nahani Valley has been shrouded in mystery for decades, with numerous individuals meeting tragic fates under perplexing circumstances. From decapitations to unexplained disappearances and eerie encounters, the valley has garnered a reputation for the inexplicable. Annie Lafferty's disappearance, witnessed by Charlie as he observed a naked woman running on all fours up a mountainside, added another layer of intrigue to the valley's history. Despite Charlie's account, Annie was never found, and the police chose not to pursue the case further, attributing her disappearance to the harsh wilderness. The subsequent deaths and disappearances of gold prospectors like Phil Powers, William Epler, Joseph Mulholland, Ernest Savard, and John Patterson only deepened the valley's enigma. Each incident seemed to defy conventional explanations with fires, decapitations, and vanishings occurring without clear reasons. The eerie encounters reported by search parties, including distant howls and screams, added to the sense of foreboding that permeated the valley. Despite efforts to uncover the truth, the Nahani Valley remains a place of unresolved mysteries and lingering danger, leading to the closure of certain areas to protect visitors from potential harm. The century-long history of disappearances, deaths, and unexplained occurrences in the Nahani Valley serves as a haunting reminder of the unknown forces that lurk within its depths, leaving the truth obscured and the imagination ripe with speculation.